Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super adorable gingerbread man. This pattern is a low sew pattern. The only thing that's going to be sewed on is his little arms here. Everything else is worked into the project, which makes it a relatively quicker work up. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to need is a weight six velvet yarn for the body color. I am using Chenille Home Slim yarn in the color Terracotta. And then you'll also need a white yarn for the frosting decorations. This one is also Chenille Home Slim weight six yarn in the color white. And then you will need a green and blue velvet yarn to make the buttons on his belly. These are weight five yarns and they are by Baby Bee. You'll also want just a little bit of a worsted weight black yarn to make the smile. You won't need very much of this, maybe just a few inches or so just to embroider the smile on your gingerbread man. And then you will need two 14 millimeter safety eyes and we will be using a six and a half millimeter hook and you will also be needing some stuffing as well. An important thing to remember is if you want your gingerbread man to turn out the same size as mine is, and I believe he's about eight inches long, then it's important that you use the same weight yarn and the same hook size to get the same size of the gingerbread man. If you use a smaller weight yarn or a smaller hook, you'll end up with a smaller one. And of course, if you do the opposite and use bigger yarn with bigger hooks, you will end up with a bigger gingerbread man. So that is just important to keep note of. So let's get started. We are gonna start with the feet of the gingerbread man and we are going to start in our brown color. The first thing we're gonna do is make a magic ring. If you know how to do that already, definitely feel free to skip this part. Otherwise, I will be showing you how to make one real quick. What you want to do to make a magic ring, you place the yarn over your three fingers and then you wrap the yarn around your fingers and then you wrap it around one more time like this. So see, we just wrapped it around our fingers here and then we're going to make an X with that strand and just wrap it right over that strand right there. Now we're going to take our hook. We're going to go under the first strand, the one that's closest to you, and pull up that second strand and grab a loop here. You can see we have a little loop. So just twist that loop that's on your hook and take that strand right there that you pulled through and loop that around the hook and just pull that through the loop that was on your hook. And now you have a magic ring so you can release everything. And it should look something like this. And sometimes I pull out this tail from the center just to have it on the outside to make it easier to pull on our ring. So to make the feet, you wanna do eight single crochet in the magic ring. So we're going to insert into our ring, pull up some yarn, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops on our hook, and that is a single crochet. So you wanna do that a total of eight times. So again, you just go into your ring, you pull up a loop, you yarn over, and you pull through both of those loops on your hook. So there's number two. Let's make number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, and the last one, number eight. So now we have eight single crochets. So we're gonna take our tail of our magic ring and pull on that to close this circle and cinch everything together. Now don't pull on it too tight because we are gonna work in that first stitch and if it's too tight, it's kind of hard to wiggle in there. But what I like to do is just kind of wiggle the stitches a little bit after tightening it so that it's a little bit more looser. And for round two, we're going to increase into every single stitch around. Here's our first single crochet that we put into the magic ring that you can see here. So we're gonna go in there and we're gonna pull up some yarn and then yarn over and pull through two. 
And this is our first stitch of the second round. And we're gonna place a stitch marker right here so that we know where we're at. So here is our stitch marker. And we're just gonna take that marker and put it into the single crochet. So now we're gonna do that one more time in the same stitch and that's an increase. So insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up two loops. So there's two single crochets and the one single crochet stitch. And so in the next stitch, we want to increase in that one as well. So there's one and two. So we have a total of four stitches now. So we'll keep going and you should end with 16 stitches in your row. So we're we'll increase one, two, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So now we have 16 stitches. And again, you can pull on your magic tail now to close up that circle just a little bit more. For the next two rounds, rounds three and four, we are going to single crochet around. Just put one stitch in each one of these single crochets. So we'll go into the first stitch of the last round and place a single crochet and move our stitch marker into that first stitch. And then just go into the next one and place a single crochet. And in the next one, one single crochet and then the next, and just keep doing that all the way around. You should have 16 stitches. And then do that one more time for a total of two rounds, and I will meet you back here. So here I am on the last stitch of the second round, and you can see that I have not finished this single crochet yet, and that is because our next round will be a color change to white. And to make it look really nice and seamless, we're going to switch to the white now and finish this stitch with the white. So go ahead and grab the white yarn that you'll be using. Grab the yarn tail, leave a little bit of extra, and then just loop that tail around your hook and pull it through those two loops that were on your hook. So that finishes the single crochet of the last round. And now we have switched to white. For the next round, we're just going to single crochet around in the white. So we'll go into that first stitch with our white, make a single crochet, replace the stitch marker. Okay, and then just place a single crochet in all of the stitches around, just like so, like you've been doing. And then keep doing that all the way around and do not finish that last stitch because we'll switch back to brown and I will meet you back here. All right, here we are on our last stitch. So what we're gonna do is just go and drop that white yarn behind our project, get our brown back and loop that around our hook and pull through to finish off that last single crochet. Now we can go ahead and cut this white yarn because we won't be using it again right now. So you can go ahead and take some scissors and just cut that tail. So for the next three rounds, we're going to single crochet around in the brown. So for round six through eight, we're just single crocheting around. And then I will meet you back here. All right, here we are at the end of the eighth round. So now we are finished with our first leg and now we're just gonna fasten off this foot. So we're gonna go into that stitch, pull up a loop, and then we're just gonna take that loop and pull it through the one that's on our hook. And that is called a slip stitch. And that is how we are fastening off the first foot. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this yarn tail. Okay, and we'll pull that tail through that loop and pull on that tail to tighten that loop just a little bit there. We'll take our stitch marker out. So we are done with the first foot. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat rows one through eight again, except when you get to eight, the end of row eight, don't fasten off because we are going to attach the feet together. So go ahead and make another one of these and I will meet you back here. All right, so here we are with our two feet. Here is my second one that I have not fastened off yet. You can see the loop is still on the hook here. So now we're gonna take our two feet and we're going to attach them. We're gonna find where we fastened off the first foot, which is right Right here. So we're going to go into that stitch right there with our hook. We're just going to go in 
we're going to take some yarn and pull that up and then we're going to pull that through the loop that is currently on our hook so we're just slip stitching the two feet together this is not our first stitch though so we're going to go into our next one and we're going to place a single crochet and then we're going to take our stitch marker from our second foot and we're just going to place that into this stitch right there so now our feet are joined now what we're going to do is for rounds 9 through 16 we're just going to single crochet around for a total of eight rounds we're just going to single crochet around so i will do round nine with you so we're just going to place a single crochet in the next stitch and the next we're at three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen last stitch 15 so we've hit that tail of the first foot we're on stitch number 15 so then we're going to go into this stitch right here of our next foot and place a single crochet so there's 16 and keep going 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and our slip stitch, 32. Now before we continue on to our next rounds, what I like to do is take this tail from our first foot and use it to just so close this little gap that you see between the feet here. We're just gonna take our tapestry needle here and thread this little tail through the needle and attach it. Okay, and now we're just gonna go ahead and sew this little hole closed by just going into nearby stitches and sewing through both of those. I like to just go in about two or three times just to really make sure that that hole is all sewed up. And then at the end, I just close it off, fasten it off by just doing a quick little knot here. And you can always, of course, make a second knot if you like. I'm a bit of a worrier, I suppose, so I most often overdo the fastening off part. <laughs> So here we go, there's a second knot, and now just tuck that tail in the side there. And now you can see that there is no gap in between the feet anymore. So now that that gap is closed, we just finished round nine, which is our first round after attaching the feet, and we have seven more rounds to go. So I am going to do those seven rounds of single crochet all the way around. You should have 32 stitches in each of those rounds. Do seven more of those rounds and I will meet you back here. All right, we just finished round 16 and this is what your gingerbread man should look like so far. Now for round 17, we're gonna do four single crochet. So I'm going to replace my stitch marker. And that's one single crochet and now we need two, three, and four then we're going to go ahead and decrease so to do that we're going to go into this stitch pull up a loop go into the next stitch pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three and then that is a decrease so we're going to repeat that one more time we're going to do one two three and four single crochet and then decrease one and two yarn over pull through all three and now we're going to do four single crochet we're going to do one two three and four now we're going to go ahead and switch to our green to get our green button so we're going to do our color change by inserting our hook into the next stitch 
pulling through that green yarn, just like so. And then yarning over and pulling through both of these. So now we have our green attached. So now what we're gonna do is what is called a bobble stitch, but just a little bit of a different variation. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that same stitch, pull up some yarn. We have three loops on our hook now. So we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna go through the first loop, then yarn over and go through two loops. Just like that. We're gonna do it again, yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull up some yarn, yarn over, we'll pull through two loops first. Yarn over, pull through two loops, two. Yarn over, go back into the stitch, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna do this one more time. So we're gonna yarn over, Go into our stitch, pull up some yarn, yarn over, pull through two. All right, so for this last stitch on the bobble, we're gonna drop our green and we're gonna go back to our brown. We're gonna grab our brown and we're gonna finish this last stitch with the brown. So we're gonna yarn over the brown and pull through all three of those loops there. So now we have brown on our hook and we finished our little gumdrop button. So now we're gonna go into the next stitch, pull up some yarn and we're gonna do a decrease. So we're gonna go into the next stitch after that and pull up some yarn. Then we're yarning over and pulling through all three. So this is what we should have, is our adorable little green button here and this is what it should look like. And we are all done with the green as well, so we can go ahead and cut this tail. And again, for added measure, you can always tie these two tails together So I'll go ahead and make one knot and just one more. All right, so now our button is secure. Okay, so next we're going to do four single crochet. One, two, three, four, decrease. So there we have a decrease. And then four single crochet, one, two, three, four, decrease. And in the last stitch, one single crochet. For round 18, we're going to insert on to the next stitch and replace our stitch marker. So that's one single crochet. We're gonna do two more single crochet for a total of three, two, and three. And then we're gonna decrease. And then we're going to repeat that pattern five times. So there's one, two, three single crochet with a decrease. And then one, two, three, decrease this one and the bobble stitch. And then one, two, three, decrease. One, two, three, decrease. And that is our fifth repeat. So now in these last two, we're just gonna place one single crochet in each. So you should have a total of 22 stitches in this round. Now for round 19, we're going to insert, replace our stitch marker. All right, and then we're gonna do 12 single crochet. So there's one, here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12. So there's our 12th single crochet. Now we're going to switch to our blue yarn. So here is our blue yarn. We're going to leave a little bit of a tail, go into this next stitch here, and pull up a loop with the blue yarn. Okay, and then we'll yarn over and pull through. 
And we're gonna repeat the same bobble stitch pattern that we did for the green button here. So we're gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Then we're gonna yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And one last time, we'll yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And don't forget for the last stitch that we're going to switch to the brown, yarn over and pull through that, all three loops there. And then we're just going to do nine single crochet. So I'm gonna go into this first one, make one single crochet. Then I'll just go ahead and cut this blue yarn so I don't forget to tie it in a knot so that it does not come undone. And we'll continue on. So we have one stitch, we have nine more to go. So here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that is the end of round 19. Now is a great time to go ahead and stuff your gingerbread man. So go ahead and get your stuffing and stuff him and then I will meet you back here. All right, so here is our gingerbread man all stuffed. You don't necessarily have to stuff him completely because we are going to work into the head now. So if there's more stuffing that needs to go in here, we can just continue to add it as we go. So now moving on, we are on row 20 now. And for row 20, we're gonna do two single crochet and decrease. And we're gonna repeat that five times. And then for the last two stitches, we'll just place one single crochet in the last two. And we will end with a total of 17 stitches for this round. So I'm gonna go into the first stitch, replace my stitch marker. And that's one stitch, so we have our second here, and then decrease, and then keep repeating that pattern five times. There's two stitches and then a decrease. Our third repeat, and then for our fourth one, we'll go into this first stitch, make a single crochet. Then we're gonna go into this brown stitch, make a single crochet. That's two, and then decrease. And then one more repeat. So there's two single crochet and a decrease. And then one single crochet in the last two stitches. So that's the end of row 20. For row 21, we're going to decrease all the way around for a total of eight decreases. And then the last stitch will place a single crochet and you should have a total of nine stitches at the end of this round. So we're gonna start with a decrease. So we're gonna go into that first one, into the next one, make a decrease, and then replace our stitch marker. And we're gonna do seven more decreases. Two, three. Here's our last decrease, eight. And then in this last stitch here, we will place one single crochet. For the next round, we'll be starting the head and we're working in the front loop only of round 22. And we will be increasing in each of these stitches around for a total of 18 stitches. I'm going to take out my stitch marker real quick so that you can see these stitches. Our first stitch is this stitch right here and there is a front loop and a back loop to the stitches and we are going to be working in the front loop and placing increases. So our first stitch right here, we're gonna work into the front loop only. So we can see that I grabbed only the front loop and makes one single crochet. Replace your stitch marker and we're increasing. So we'll place one more single crochet in that same stitch. So there's two and keep repeating that in the front loop only of all of these stitches. You should have 18 stitches at the end of the round, and I will meet you back here. All right, I just have one last stitch to go. 17, 
and 18. Around 23, we're going to be using whole stitches again, not just the front loop. And we're going to be increasing in all of these stitches again for a total of 36 stitches. So we're going to go into the first one, replace our stitch marker, Let's go into the same stitch and increase again. And keep repeating that pattern in each stitch, place two single crochets, and I will meet you back here. All right, here we are on our last stitch. So here is 35 and 36. So for the next two rounds, rounds 24 and 25, you're just going to single crochet around and you should have 36 stitches. So you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch for the next two rounds and I will meet you back here. All right, here I am on the last stitch of round 25. So here is what your gingerbread man's head should be looking like. For round 26, we're gonna do 34 single crochet and then decrease on the last two stitches. Four, so there's 34 single crochet. And for these last two, we're just going to decrease. So we'll go into the first one, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop and decrease. For the next two rounds, rounds 27 and 28, you're just going to single crochet around. And for this last round, you should have 35. And for the next two rounds, you'll have 35 stitches as well. So go ahead and do rounds 27 and 28 with just one single crochet in each stitch. And I will meet you back here. All right, here we are at the end of round 28. I'm just placing my last single crochet. So now we have finished round 28, and this is what our head is starting to look like. Now before we move on, we're going to go ahead and place the eyes, and the eyes are going to go between rounds 27 and 28, so the last two that you just did, and they're going to be about seven stitches apart. So go ahead and grab your 14 millimeter safety eyes. So right there, and then about seven stitches apart. And just make sure to adjust it, make sure it's central in the body and that it looks good. And then once you've done that, you can place the safety caps on the back to close the eyes. All right, so there's our eyes on our gingerbread man. And the next thing we're gonna do is place the mouth as well before we continue on. And the mouth is gonna go on round 26 between the eyes, which is this round, because this is 28, this is 27, and here's 26. So the mouth is gonna go about right here. All right, so go ahead and grab the few inches of black worsted weight yarn, and we're gonna place the mouth here between the eyes. So we're just gonna go in from the back like so, do this back stitch, pull some yarn up, we'll leave a little bit of a tail on the inside of the head so that we can tie the mouth shut. So if you want to hold on to that with your two fingers in the back, you can do that as well. We're going to go over a few stitches to about right here, insert your darning needle, and pull in. Then we're gonna come right below it from the inside, right about there, pull up. Then we're gonna loop under this loop and go right back in where we came out, right here, which will pull the mouth down and pull through and then just pull to tighten. And that will make your mouth there. And then you can adjust it by just kind of shifting around the stitches a little bit if you want to round out the mouth just a little bit more. And then once you're happy with it, then you can go ahead and tie these two tails together in the back. Just make one or two knots. Don't pull it too tight because that'll pull on the other strings of the mouth. So if you just adjusted it how you wanted it, it might tighten it up and make it a bit smaller, so just don't pull too tight. And then just make a few knots to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Okay, and once you tighten it, you might need to adjust it just a little bit, because again, pulling and tightening it will 
tighten the strands that you just worked with a little bit. So if you have to adjust it, you can definitely go ahead and do that. So there is our gingerbread mouth. Now we can continue on. We are on row 29 now. And what we're gonna do for this row is we're going to do two single crochet and decrease and we'll do that eight times and then we will do a single crochet and a decrease for the last three stitches and this should give us a total of 26 stitches so i'm going to replace my stitch marker and we're doing one two single crochet decrease and we're going to repeat that eight times one two decrease that's our second repeat repeat this eight times and i will meet you back here all right we just finished our eighth repeat now for the next stitch we'll place one single crochet and then we will decrease in the last two so again you should have a total of 26 stitches in this round so for round 30 we're going to go ahead and switch to white so we're going to drop the brown grab the white tail insert into this first stitch pull up some yarn, making sure a little bit of a tail is left behind here. And we'll make one single crochet to attach it, just like so, and replace our stitch marker. So for this one, we're gonna do one single crochet decrease, and we're gonna repeat that pattern eight times. And then for the last two stitches, we'll just place one single crochet in each. So here's our first stitch, then we're gonna decrease, then we'll do that again one single crochet decrease and we'll do it again one single crochet decrease and repeat that for a total of eight times and i will meet you back here all right i just finished my eighth repeat now for the last two stitches we're just going to place one single crochet in each and we should have a total of 18 stitches for this round and that is the last of the white. So before we move on and we switch back to brown, you can go ahead and stuff what's left of the head and I will meet you guys back here. All right, now we have stuffed the head to the best of our abilities right now. So we can continue on here and we're gonna go back to the brown. So we're just gonna insert into this next stitch. We'll pull up the brown and yarn over and pull through. We're doing our first single crochet of round 31 and replace your stitch marker. We are done with this white, so we'll go ahead and cut this tail. And you can tie those two tails together, that white first white one and the last white one if you'd like. For round 31, we're going to just single crochet, decrease times six all the way around. So we're gonna repeat that pattern. So we have one single crochet, then we'll decrease then one single crochet, decrease, and just keep repeating that all the way around and you should have a total of 12 stitches for this round 31. All right, so here we are at the end of round 31. And now for round 32, we're going to do an invisible decrease times six all the way around and you have six stitches at the end of this. And let me show you how to do invisible decrease. So what I'm gonna do first is take the stitch marker out so that it's easier to show you. So first, our first stitch will go into the front loop only and then we'll go into the next front loop of the next stitch, just like that. And then we will pull our yarn through those two loops and then yarn over and pull through those two. And that is an invisible decrease. Then we will replace our stitch marker. Okay, and we will just keep repeating that all the way around. So go into the front loop of the first one, the front loop of the second one, pull up some yarn, pull through those two, yarn over, pull through two and keep repeating that all the way around for a total of six stitches and i will meet you back here all right i've just finished my last invisible decrease so now our head is pretty much finished so all i'm going to do is fasten off i'm going to do this by going into the next stitch pulling up some yarn and pulling that through the loop that is on our hook making a slip stitch again then i'm going to cut the tail leaving just a little bit of a tail to sew this tiny hole closed here so Pull on that tail to tighten that knot you just made. Take your stitch marker out. 
And now if you need to put a little bit more stuffing in the head, you can definitely get some through that hole still. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, and now I feel like he's adequately stuffed, so I'm going to take our tapestry needle. Okay, and then we're just going to take it around these stitches and just go into the front loops of these stitches all the way around. And then once you're done with that, you just pull on that tail to tighten and close that hole. All right, and once that hole is closed, then you'll just go through the stitches once or twice to start hiding this yarn tail. And then I like to go through the middle and out the back somewhere over here, and then go ahead and cut that tail. There is our gingerbread man's head and body, and now we need to make the arms. So to make the arms, we're going to start with the brown. We're going to make a magic ring. And again, if you want to see how to do this, just go back to the beginning to see that magic ring tutorial again. So we have our magic ring, and now we're going to place four single crochet inside the magic ring. So we're going to go in one, two, three, and four. Pull on your tail to tighten the magic ring. For round two, we're going to do one single crochet and increase and repeat that around for a total of six stitches. So we're going to go into the first stitch right here, make a single crochet, place your stitch marker in there. In the next stitch, we're going to do two single crochets. One, two, in the next one single crochet. And in the next two, one, two. So that's a total of six stitches. You can go ahead and try and turn your arm right side out now. For round three, we're going to repeat that. We're going to do one single crochet increase all the way around. So here is our last stitch. I have not finished it yet though, because I'm going to switch to white for the next round. So grab your white tail, loop it over the hook and pull through to finish that last stitch of the, the round. And now for this next round, round four, just single crochet around for a total of nine stitches. So we're gonna go in this one, place one single crochet, and then each one of these just place one single crochet. There's two. Last one, nine. We're going to go back to brown though, so don't finish this stitch. Instead, grab your brown tail and finish the stitch with the brown. For rounds five through nine, so for the next five rounds, we're just going to do one single crochet all the way around in the brown for a total of nine stitches. Before you do that, you are welcome to just cut this tail of the white because we are done using it. If you'd like to secure it, just go ahead and tie those two white tails together if that is something that you wish to do. And once you've done that, just stuff them into the arm. Now do five rounds of just one single crochet around in each stitch and I will meet you back here. All right, we just finished round nine. So for the last round, round 10, we're going to place one single crochet and then we'll decrease and we'll repeat that all the way around for a total of six stitches. So go into the first stitch, place a single crochet, replace your stitch marker, decrease, and you can just do a regular decrease. And then one single crochet, decrease. One single crochet, decrease. Okay, before we continue on, you can definitely put some stuffing in the arm if you'd like. For this last round, we're just going to take our stitch marker out and we're gonna just fold that arm so that it's flat, just like so. And we're just going to single crochet across to close it up. So we're just going to go into this first stitch and then we'll go into this stitch behind it, pull up a loop, and then make a single crochet. Then we'll just go into the next one, pull up a loop, single crochet, and we can go into this last one here. And you just need to find a spot. It does, it's not perfect science or anything here. Okay, 
and make a single crochet. So this is what your arm should look like, all folded and closed. Now just chain one, just like so, and then cut the tail, leaving enough to sew onto the body. So I like to leave about that much. And pull that through and pull to tighten. So here's one arm. Go ahead and repeat that one more time for a second arm, and then I will show you how to sew them onto the body. All right, so here we are with our two arms. Now you're gonna take your gingerbread man. The arms of the gingerbread man are gonna go on to look like this. So all we have to do is take this first arm and sew it into this space between the head and the body, into that crevice right there. And as soon as you have that per position perfected, you wanna take the tail, and then you're just going to start sewing, grabbing a stitch from the head or just anywhere in the body. And then we'll go into the bottom and grab a stitch. And this is one of those things that ends up being a little bit tricky. There's tons of ways to sew on these parts. And if you know a better way or there's a way that you're more comfortable with, then definitely go ahead and do that. It's not an exact science. It's just that you want the arm sewn onto the body in the proper position. All right, sometimes I go back and forth too if I feel like it's just a little too loose. So I ended up in the back of the arm again after I was done sewing. But this is what he looks like so far with his arm. And so now once you're done sewing, just go ahead and make a knot, tie it off and hide the tail. So I'm gonna make a knot. And I'm gonna hide the tail. and then just cut the extra off. So there we have one arm on the gingerbread man. Now go ahead and repeat that, placing the arm in the same position on the opposite side of the body, and I will meet you back here. Here is our completed little gingerbread man. Isn't he just the cutest little thing? I just love him so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe for more because I often have new videos and new tutorials out as well. If you would like a written pattern that has a bunch of pictures and step-by-step -step instructions so that you don't have to watch this video again over and over again to make more than one, I do have a written pattern for sale on my Etsy and it's just to help support my shop and my YouTube so that I can keep bringing new tutorials to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.